Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Anita. I'm a consultant microbiologist. Uh, I'm here to discuss about fungal infections of the respiratory tract. So, moving on to the uh, lecture preview. In this lecture, we are going to see about introduction of the uh, fungal infections that is respiratory tract infections caused by fungi and also what is uh, pneumocystis pneumonia, what is the causative agent and uh, the pathogenesis and also the clinical manifestations and followed by zygomycosis, uh, especially rhizopus and mucor and what is mucor mycosis, everything uh, about uh, the zygomycetes and aspergillosis, what are the species uh, causing uh, the respiratory tract infections like aspergillus flavors, fumigators and niger and penciliosis and uh, all about the laboratory diagnosis, especially uh, the microscopic examination by lactophenol uh, cotton blue mount and culture methods that is culture on sabre roots, dextrose agar and other uh, serological methods. Okay, So, uh, we will see one by one. So, uh, moving on to the introduction. So, respiratory tract infections can be produced by various fungal agents, various fungi and broadly classified into opportunistic fungal agents and fungi causing systemic mycosis. Okay, opportunistic fungal agents, these are the major fungal agents uh, that causes opportunistic infection in a immunocompromised individuals. Okay, so the first and foremost is pneumocystis derovaci pneumonia and uh, uh, zygomyce, the zygomycosis, aspergillosis and pencilosis. So, these are the opportunistic fungal agents which causes infections in uh, immunocompromised individuals. Okay. And fungi causing systemic mycosis, um, this, these uh, uh, fungal agents involve multiple organs and uh, the human infections occurs by inhalation of their spores. Usually, these are saprophytic it is present abundantly in the environment okay and all are dimorphic fungi that is it can uh, grow as a mold form as well as in the yeast form in different two different temperatures and uh, the agents which causes systemic mycosis are blastomyces dermatitis histoplasma capsulatum paracoxidioides brasiliensis and coccidioides emetis okay these are the fungal agents that causes systemic mycosis and next is yeast that is cryptococcus neoformans uh, which is the pathogenic uh, yeast and the isolation of candida species in respiratory specimens like uh, sputum, sputum culture is a common finding. So, candida is a, a colonizer usually we get in a respiratory samples like sputum. So, it is uh, never indicative of underlying pulmonary candidiasis and therefore it does not warrant any antifungal treatment. In case if the patient sample contains uh, candida, so it does not mean a pathogen, it, it could be a colonizer. Usually the uh, candida species and sputum culture is a common finding and it represents uh, colonization. So, in that case, those patients does not need any antifungal treatment as a prophylactic. Okay. So, moving on to the pneumocystis pneumonia. So, here uh, this has been increasingly reported especially after the discovery of HIV AIDS. Okay. So, recently the taxonomy of uh, pneumocystis has been changed. Once it was thought to be a protozoan, but now it has been classified under a fungal category, fungus. This is mainly based on the nucleic acid sequence studies. Okay. So, various nucleic acid sequence studies supports uh, this to be a fungus. So, it has been classified under fungus fungal agents now, but it was previously thought to be a protozoan. And taxonomists renamed the human species of uh, pneumocystis as pneumocystis gerovaci. And previously used a species name was pneumocystis carinae, which has been assigned to describe the rat species of pneumocystis. Okay. So, the new term is pneumocystis gerovaci. And what is the pathogenesis? Okay, pneumocystis actually exist in two forms. One is cystiform, another one is trophozoite forms. So, usually the cystiforms are found in the environment, whereas the human uh, tissues, in human tissues, both the forms are present, like both uh, the cyst form as well as the trophozoite forms are found in the human tissues. 
especially the cystalone is found in the environment. The trophozoites usually contains 4 to 8 sporozoites within it. These are found in the human tissues. Once inhaled, what happens? As I said, the cysts are found in the environment. Once inhaled, the cysts are carried to the lungs. In the lungs, these get transformed into the trophozoite stage. This trophozoite induces an inflammatory response which results in the recruitment of the inflammatory cells like plasma cells resulting in frothy exudate and hence it is also being termed as plasma cell pneumonia. Okay, actually it exists in two forms, one is cyst form and trophozoite form. Cyst form is found in environment and both the forms are found in the human tissue. Once inhaled, the cyst forms are carried to the lungs where it transforms into trophozoites and these trophozoites induces an inflammatory response. Because of this inflammatory response, it results in the frothy exudate. So, during the inflammatory response, so there occurs a recruitment of more number of plasma cells resulting in the frothy exudate and hence the term is also called as plasma cell pneumonia. Okay, so this is about pathogenesis of pneumocystis pneumonia.